today we are going to discuss about the knot and serum so here i want to determine the current through the one kilo resistance by using knot and serum so i want to verify the result by using direct inspection method i want to determine the current through the one kilo resistance by using direct inspection method thereafter i am going to verify that result by using the knot and serum what is direct inspection method that is by using mesh analysis or nodal current division or voltage division you can apply any technique thereafter verify that result with the knot and serum now see the direct inspection method okay for that i am applying the mesh analysis now how many loops are present in this circuit two loops first loop and second loop now i am assuming this loop current as clockwise direction and this is also clockwise direction and this current is i1 current and this current is i2 current now see here here 1.8 into i1 plus at this resistance i1 i2 both the currents are flowing but how these two are flowing whether same direction or opposite direction if you observe here here i1 is entering that means i1 is downward direction whereas i2 is upward direction at this resistance at this particular resistance i1 downward direction i2 upward direction that means both are in the opposite direction so that is the reason why we need to subtract the currents so here we are writing the loop one current so that's why you need to assume that loop one current is greater when compared to loop two current now it is i1 minus i2 into 1.8 now see i1 minus i2 into 1.8 is equal to voltage rise is 15 now read at this equation 1.8 plus 1.8 is 3.6 i1 minus 1.8 into i2 is equal to 15 equation 1 now similarly write the loop to equation here we don't have any voltage rises so that's why simply it is zero now write this equation again here also it is connected between two loops i2 and i1 now we are writing the loop to equation so that's why we need to assume that i2 is greater i1 so it is i2 minus i1 into 1.8 see here 1.8 into i2 minus 7 plus 1.8 into i2 here it is 1 into i2 so 1 into i2 now read at this equation minus 1.8 i1 plus 1.8 plus 1.8 3.6 3.6 plus 1 4.6 i2 is equal to 0 now if you solve this equation 1 and equation 2 you will get i1 as 5.18 milliamps i2 as 2.02 milliamps here the current units are milliamps why because the resistance is given in the problem is kilo ohms so that's why it is milliamps if it is given ohms then we are need to write amperes but in the problem it is given kilo ohms so that's why i am writing it as milliamps now our requirement is current to 1 kilo ohm resistance now which current is moving either i1 or i2 i2 current is moving through this 1 kilo so that is the reason why the result is i2 so here current to 1 kilo ohm resistance is 2.02 milliamps okay now this is the direct inspection method now we need to verify this result now we need to verify this result with the norton's technique now what is the norton's technique for a given circuit this is the given circuit for a given circuit we need to convert this total circuit to the simple circuit that means like this simple circuit where the current source is connected in parallel with the resistance across this terminals we need to connect the load resistance what is meant by the load resistance where we are determining the voltage or current that is called as the load resistance here we are determining the current to 1 kilo resistance so that's why it is load resistance substitute here 1 kilo initially we don't know the in value or n value now we have a procedure for determining these two in as well as rn now see the procedure for in now see here while determining the norton's current while determining the norton's current we need to short circuit the load this is the given problem now in this this is called as the load while determining the norton's current just short circuit the load after the read of the circuit now see here now this is the read on remaining everything is same here load is short circuited now determine the current through this short circuited branch here it is short circuited now now determine the current through that short circuited branch by using any technique mesh nodal current division rule or any technique you can apply okay here i am applying the current division rule now 
what is the current division rule i want to determine the current to r3 now it will become total total r2 is opposite so it is r2 by r2 plus r3 now r2 is 1.8 is given r3 also 1.8 is given but we don't know the it value now what is the it procedure now total current is equal to total voltage by total resistance how to determine the total resistance by using series parallel technique if you observe here how these two are connected these two elements are connected in parallel that is r2 r3 both are connected in parallel so that's why it is r2 into r3 by r2 plus r3 is here r2 into r3 by r2 plus r3 now this combination this total combination is in series with r1 if you observe here if you observe the circuit this total combination is in series with r1 so that's why it is r1 plus this total part now simply substitute voltage value r1 value r2 3 value r3 value see here i substitute all the values then i got the it value as 5.55 milliamps okay now substitute this it value here then you will get i naughton's value now this is my i naughton's so here it is 5.55 r2 is 1.8 Again, R2 plus R3 is 1.8 plus 1.8. Now it is 2.77. Now I got Norton's current as 2.77. Now substitute this 2.77 here. 2.77. Okay. Next, see the procedure for RN. Now the procedure for RN is totally similar to RTH procedure. See here. See the procedure. <coughs> While determining the Norton's resistance, just remove the load and just remove the load. Now see here in this circuit. In this circuit, remove this load and short circuit the voltage source okay now sir here load is removed and voltage source is short circuited then determine the resistance between open circuited terminal that means a removed branch here the resistance is removed that means load is removed okay at this we need to determine the norton's resistance okay if you observe here if you observe here how these two are connected r1 and r2 these two are connected in parallel. Now, say R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. Now, this total combination is in series with R3. That is plus R3. This substitute all these values 1.8 into 1.8 by 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1.8 plus 1 plus 1.8 plus 1.8. Now, you will get the answer as R naught is equal to 2.7. Now, substitute this 2.7 here. Okay. IN is substituted, RN is substituted, RL is substituted. Now we know the IN value, RN value, RL value. Substitute all these values. Then what is the current through the RL? For this, again, I'm applying the current division rule. Now we know the total current. Now this is called for this circuit. For this circuit, this is the total current. That is 2.77. That means IN into. Now for RL, RN is opposite. So it is opposite RN by total resistance is RN plus RL formula. Now IRL is equal to IN and Substitute 2.77 into 2.7 by 2.7 plus 1. If you calculate this value, you will get 2.02. If you observe here, by using direct inspection method, 2.02. By using Norton's technique also, 2.02. Hence, Norton's theorem is verified. Why? Because we got the same values in both the cases. Okay. Similarly, similarly, if you want to determine the current through load whenever this voltage is 20 volts or 25 volts simply substitute here 20 or 25 then calculate this value okay similarly here also substitute 20 or 25 then calculate this it and in substitute in here but here there is no change in rn value why because here Rn is independent of voltage. Here we don't have any voltage source. It is independent of voltage. If you change the voltage value 15, 20, 25, that means this value. If you change this value, there is no change in R naughtons. R naughtons is constant. Only I naughtons is going to change. Why? Because here it is if this value is going to change, then here V is going to change. Here 15 means 20 or 25. Then IT is going to change. If IT change, this is also going to change. So that is the reason why only IN is going to change if you change this voltage to the 20 or 25. Okay, like this you can calculate 20, 25, 30 like that. Okay, now 
this is the case for 15 volts. For 15 volts, 2.02 by using direct inspection method. By using Norton's technique also, we got 2.02. In both the cases, we got the same results. So that's why the Norton's theorem is verified. Thank you.